Alrighty, here's a little preview of the Gasomatics 9000. The commercial unit does not actually come with donkeys. <laughs> anyway, the whole system's built onto a trolley that has independent steering and a removable handle simply to make the, the whole thing a bit more compact. The trolley carries the original Victory Gas Works 15 horsepower, or was it 15 kilowatt, gasifier system. So you have the gasifier, the cyclone, and the cooler condenser tower. I've added blowers, valves, plumbing, uh, a radiator, and a number of cooling fans to the system. Each of these items in conjunction with things such as the igniter here. Here it is, let's fire it up. Are controlled by this control panel here. These switches allow the operator to manually select shakers for the grate and the hopper, the igniter that you've just seen, the alternator, inverter, cooling fans and various other parts um, from the convenience of one location. So when you turn the switch here to backburn mode, you're activating this blower which actually pushes air back through the radiator and into the gasifier to assist the manufacture of charcoal. When the startup blower is selected, you turn that switch to that, it turns this blower off and switches this one on, which enables the flare. Now, the, for safety's sake, the flare which burns in this cyclone mixer cup down here is conducted through this stainless steel tube. There we go. It's conducted through there. So as the flare heat will come out of here, the flames don't usually get this high, but the heat will. And the idea is that instead of having the flare burning down here where all the sensitive gear is, we raise it to a nice safe location. So all of that's fairly straightforward. <coughs> we have a 13 horsepower engine here that used to be a 5.5 kilowatt generator. But unfortunately the alternator, the generator packed up, and this is where it used to be. I ripped it off and put a car alternator there. That's modified so as I can get any old voltage I want out of that up to about 80 volts DC. It's going to be set up for no other purpose in the short term than to maintain a charge on the starter battery. So whatever load is imposed on that, the alternator should hopefully compensate for. And that will feed this 1000 watt inverter whose purpose is to supply a steady 230 volts, 50 hertz, pretty much regardless of what the engine speed is. Uh, coming back to the control center, we have a number of switches, rotary dials to select backburn, start up or filter purge blowers. So we've got our backburn blower here, our flare start up burner, and around the corner, our filter purge blower. It's uh, pretty clear what those do, so I needn't really go into much detail there. We also have cooling fan selector switch that allows us to select between the radiator fans down here and the tower fans over here, hence the positions marked on the control panel. We have shakers for the grate and the uh, hopper in case they are required. Um, this gasifier does require regular attention in the hopper and great department for Shakeology. We have our igniter switch. Its purpose is to trigger a spark. You can hear it, but you can't see it because I've got that tube in the way. Um, and these two switches here don't seem pretty particularly obvious to start with, but my, my idea in putting those there is that when you start the engine, you don't really want to go putting a load on it until it's ready to actually start providing power. That is, when it and the gas pipe heat it up some. At that point, when the engine's running smoothly, switch the alternator switch on, which enables the alternator to put a load on the engine and begin charging the battery down there. So once the charge on the battery is developed sufficiently well and it's registering on the voltmeter, the inverter can be switched on and 
the consumer can then have the power required. I've added a time, a runtime meter here. Its purpose really is to assist in maintenance, uh, regular maintenance management. So every 10 hours perhaps the filters would be cleaned out. This is where things start getting interesting, talking of gas flow and regulation. What I've done is I've put gate valves behind this control panel here. It takes five turns to complete gate valve travel from open to closed and vice versa. There's one for the gas control and one for the air control. Looking around the back, the air control is simply admitting air through a filter, through the gate valve, into a simple manifold. The manifold outlet is then conducted down to the carburetor. There it is. So that's uh, pretty straightforward, it's nothing special. What I do have though is something a little unusual. Um, where those gases, well, here we are, I've got to aim the camera at it, where those gases actually enter the system, I'm attempting to measure the level of vacuum. We're going to be attaching these sampling points up here to nanometers. So each one can register the level of vacuum. So I can register the level of vacuum associated with the gas control and the other one for air control. So during normal engine operation a couple of nanometers occupying this space down here will allow me to re observe relative vacuum levels. So under normal circumstances you'd open the gas all the way, close the air all the way, push the engine start button and manipulate this until you get successful starting of the engine. What I want to do is adds an extra level to this. You can see on the back of the air control there's a toothed sprocket. It fits with this belt and another toothed sprocket there that will be driven by this motor. It's a stepper motor. 1.8 degrees per step so it can go backwards and forwards at varying speeds and levels of rotation. It'll be positioned something like that so as it's essentially going to be responsible for driving this back and forth under computer control. That computer will be monitoring the level to vacuum as mentioned before and the user is going to observe this sort of operation. <laughs> Automatic rotation but like some sort of player piano. <laughs> um, the concept isn't tested yet, I have no idea if it's going to even work, but I'm fairly confident that with a little bit of careful programming on the control system for this, that I'll be able to implement some sort of automatic control system. Uh, this project is experimental by nature, um, even the donkeys realise this, they're inspecting it at the moment for carrot problems. Uh, well, that's their excuse anyway. But um, given all the experimental qualities behind this, I'm fairly sure it's going to be successful. What else can I say about this? This little gasifier is currently full of Pinus radiata. I call these gasoline granules. It takes seven pounds of gasoline granules to fill the gasifier from the nozzles to the top of the hopper. And in my experience so far running this engine with a one kilowatt shaft or one kilowatt electrical load on the alternator, which probably translates to about one and a half kilowatts shaft loading, I get about one and a half hours of runtime. So I don't actually know what, how that relates on the efficiency chart, but I'd say it's actually pretty good. Um, when I'm running this, my experience so far indicates that the exhaust doesn't have any smell to it. Just looking at the exhaust system. This is my version of an exhaust system. It's a homemade muffler where the exhaust is coupled out through here to whatever piping I may want to add later. The exhaust is on a flexible union coupled back to the cylinder head. When the engine's running, I uh, don't actually detect any odour on the exhaust which is very nice. Um, 10 hours of runtime so far has yielded a clean spark plug. So when I've taken that spark plug out of there and had a look, it's not dirty or anything like that and uh, so I have reason to be pleased there. 
the feed tube has had 10 hours of experience so far and the only thing I found in that was suet. I washed it out with water. Uh, talking of filtering, where this bilge blower presently is, is going to be responsible for purging this filter to assist in filling the whole thing up with gas for the engine to enjoy an easy start. There's going to be extra filtering along here based on the Flash 001 USA design. There will be a couple of cylinders that will be arranged in a sort of screw fit arrangement or a bayonet cap arrangement. So they'll be as easy to put in as light bulbs are basically, therefore easily taken out and uh, replaced or cleaned or whatever is necessary. Of course once those are installed this plumbing will include them and this bilge blower will be moved to the high side of those so as to make it easy for the engine to start. The last thing you want to do is rely on the engine to pull all that gas through all that filter volume before actually getting flammable uh, engine fuel to run on. Uh, what I'd like to see as a result of these little bits and pieces I'm doing is that once the filters, uh, the blowers have done their job, that the engine will start pretty much straight away. I've been able to achieve it before where when the mixture is correct a cold engine started immediately on the first attempt on the electric crank. I'm actually having a hard time recording this because the donkeys keep chasing me around. Um, they like company. <laughs> but that's stated. Commercial gasifiers don't actually come with donkeys, you need to provide your own. <laughs> okay folks, um, I'm hoping I've covered all the bases with this. This is a work in progress at the moment. I'm making all sorts of new discoveries, learning new things and hoping to be able to put those lessons to good effect very soon. Cheers boys and girls.